Welcome back to Midco Sports tonight. Tom Neiman joining me right here to talk some Jackrabbit Hi, basketball. Well, how, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Fabulous. All right. Well, let's talk about SDSU hoops. We're going to start with the men. They're off to a 7-2 and two start and just had a big win on Tuesday night over Ole Miss in overtime on the road. So what does a win like that do for a program like that? Remember when you guys were running through the NIT a couple of years ago and had that confidence after uh, all those wins? <laughs> yes. Just a, really a huge confidence booster, I think, most of all for the Jackrabbit men. Uh, Mississippi might not be a great SEC team this year, but still to go and beat a Power 5 conference team on their home floor is a really big deal. And then to get paid to do it is even better. Jacks led by 20 at halftime in this game. They had a 23 point lead in the first half of this game, made 11 threes in the first half on their way to that big lead, but then they let all of it get away, actually got behind by three points with about three minutes to play, but they get it to overtime and they get the win in overtime and win 99 to 97. Uh, Reed Tellinghusen was really good in this game for the Jackrabbits, had five threes and 19 points. Uh, Mike Dom had 26 points, but he fouled out early in overtime and that is probably, you see how athletic Ole Miss is here. This was a good win. But anyway, that's probably most notable, Stuart, is that they won in overtime without Mike Dom playing in that last three and a half minutes of the game after he fouled out. Anyway, as you said, the Jacks are seven and two right now. They were three and six through nine games last year. Mm -hmm. Two of those wins were against Division II teams, so they are off to a much better, a really good start this yeah, season. Yeah, very fast start. Some big wins also beat Iowa down in the Cayman Islands, so they have some quality wins. But you talk yeah. about Mike Dom, and um, obviously a star for the Jacks, a nationwide star. But what kind of progression have you seen in his game so far? Well. I think it uh, comes down to his defense, really, most of all this year. His scoring and his rebound numbers are right where they were through nine games last year. He's averaging 20 points a game, eight rebounds a game. He can still shoot the three. Uh, one thing the coaches are watching this year is to make sure that he is a consistent rebounder, not just worrying about being a scorer, but he's usually the biggest guy out there for the Jacks, so he's got a rebound. He ended up averaging 25 points a game last year, probably going to get there again this year, and he may have added a head fake or a scoop shot or something different this year, but it's going to be tough for him to prove, uh, improve offensively. So it's got to be other things. He's turning it over less and he's blocking more shots than he did uh, early last season, which means he's getting better at passing out of double team situations. He's trying to be better at taking care of the basketball on the dribble and not turn it over. And then at the defensive end, actually trying to be somewhat of a rim protector uh, by blocking some shots. And then the biggest thing, Stu, is be great at help defense on ball screens. When his guy is the screener, they need Mike to be better at helping his guy get around that screen and then getting back to his own guy in those high pick and roll situations or high screens. Help defense or hedge defense, whatever you, what do you guys call that at USD? <laughs> we call it help. Well, hedge, it depends if it's a screen. Get out and help and then hedge. You're yeah. out hedging, but then, you know, in the weak side, yeah. you're help. But it's usually his guy that's yes. making that high screen, so he's gotta be very good at and that. And that's not easy, especially with post players. You think about all those screens yeah. that take place at the top of the key yes. and then all of a sudden you got to get back and protect the rim but yeah. they're asking a lot of Mike Dom but he's a great player and we'll see yeah he's gonna score Dom. we'll just see how good he is defensively this year we'll keep track of that well another player that people who haven't watched the Jacks this year might not know about is David Jenkins jr. but they should because he's great tell and, us about this new and they yeah they do by now he's a true freshman from Tacoma Washington he played one year at a prep school in Kansas uh, last year and now is in his first year with the Jacks but he's six foot two he's really strong really put together and he can really shoot it he is second on the team in scoring right now 15 points a game right behind Mike Dom he took over in overtime in that win at Mississippi he had eight points in that overtime period and the biggest thing you'll notice about Jenkins Jr. is his confidence he is fearless uh, no conscience when he is on the basketball floor he's kind of one of those borderline cocky guys <laughs> that you love to have on your team you might not necessarily like him on the other team but he is really confident as a true freshman right now and averaging 15 a game that is very impressive especially you know coming in I mean he did play to prep school but yeah. to just jump into division one not easy to do yeah. well the men's team is doing well but the women's team per usual yeah. off to a great start too and Tom the SDSU women extended their regular season home win streak to 11 in a row last night beating a very good Northern Iowa team so how good can this team be this year with and what are their potential like stumbling points if they were going to struggle yeah uh, maybe and as you said you and I uh, was a national tournament team last year uh, struggling a little bit this year but still a good team as you said and the Jacks are good right now they could be really good they've got 10 players in the rotation right now still trying to figure out who's 
playing when, how many minutes everybody is going to get, uh, try to get everybody comfortable in whatever role they're going to be playing this year for the Jacks. And they have had some really good wins on the road so far. They did win this game at home last night, but had too many stretches where they didn't make shots, uh, had a big lead, went cold in the third quarter, and then turned uh, this game into a closer game than it really should have been. But Maddie Giebert, Lexi Alexander, two of their uh, older guards were really good at the end, carried them down the stretch, and they end up winning this game by 10. And they played some defense, and that has uh, been that and hitting some big timely shots. That's what's gotten him to six and one on the season so far. And Aaron Johnston has talked a lot about that to his players. You don't have to be a big scorer to help us win. Play defense, play smart, rebound, hustle. Those are the things that we need because we have a lot of players who can score. And when we're not making shots, we need all those other little things that can carry the team. I'm sure you've heard that speech <laughs> uh, from your coaches at USD before as well. Yeah, and that depth just makes them so dangerous. You think when you get to the end of the season and everyone's legs are getting tired, you have fresh legs, fresh people ready to go. But no doubt the person carrying that team is Macy Miller. Yeah. And she was injured a year ago, but now she is back. Looks like she hasn't missed a beat. So what does she mean in her return this year? Oh, um, you know, Macy, every great team has that one player who's a little smarter, a little more mature, just has more basketball smarts, and is just flat out a better player than everybody else on the team. And all their teammates go into a game knowing that that player is going to get it done for us that night. That is Macy Miller for the Jackrabbits. Really makes the team whole again. There was kind of, you could tell, there was just a big empty spot on this roster last year when she went out. Leads them in scoring right now, leads them in assists. Kind of had a tough game uh, last night against Northern Iowa. Had a tough game in the loss at Green Bay, and that just kind of shows you that as she goes, this team really does go. But she talk about leaders on teams that you have to have, and she is such a great leader for the Jackets. She's outstanding in her red shirt junior year, so she has this season and next season. So we got one to go. So. But the future is bright for the Jackrabbits. Two very good freshmen we want to touch on, and that's Maya Selland and Ty Lee Irwin, both Dakota girls. And what have they meant so far yeah, to this one team? One from South Dakota, one from North Dakota. Uh, those two are third and fourth in scoring right now behind Macy Miller and Maddie Giebert for the Jacks. And Maya Selland, the South Dakota girl, starting as a true freshman. And one of the Jacks coaches was talking uh, before the season how in high school that Selen could grab a rebound, a rebound, take five dribbles, get down the floor, go to the other end and score and do it all herself. They didn't think she would be able to do that at SDSU, but she can do that and she has. Nine points, six rebounds last night in this game here against Northern Iowa. She made four threes, had 20 points in the Jacks win over North Carolina State, one of their great wins on the road so far this season. And then looking at Tylee Irwin as well. She's talented, yeah. North Dakota girl, yeah, Wapiton. Wapiton, North Dakota, hometown for Tylee Irwin. And another player that they weren't sure what they were going to get coming in. She's put on a lot of muscle since she has been there. She comes off the bench with that first group off the bench, plays with a lot of confidence as a freshman, gets about 15 minutes a game, and she is scoring seven points a game right now. That's a pretty good ratio for that uh, many minutes in the ball game. Her assist to turnover ratio is on the plus side right now. You love that out of a freshman. And uh, she has really played well in her first seven college games so far for the Jackrabbits. Yeah, they are definitely going to be tough, but they have a tough test on yeah. Sunday. Yeah. Louisville coming to Frost Arena, and they are the fourth ranked team in the nation. I just watched them play last night against Indiana, who's another good team. They yeah. won 72 to 59. They looked good, but the Jacks are good too, especially at home. So what can we look for in that yeah, matchup? They're impressive. Louisville? Louisville. How do you say it? <laughs> Louisville. Louisville. <laughs> Louisville is what we're going to go with, but uh, this is going to be a tough game. Maybe one of the best teams ever to come to Frost Arena. And if you recall, they beat the Jacks by 53 last year, and that was SDSU's first game after Macy Miller went out with that injury. But anyway, uh, Louisville went on to the NCAA tournament, won a couple of games there before losing in the Sweet 16. This year, they have most of that team back. They're 7-0, ranked number four in the country. I think this game right here is their game against Murray State last week, where they scored 115 points and won by 64. Their average margin of win right now, Stu, is 30 points. Oh, wow. They've been blowing some people out. They have Asia Durr, who's the ACC preseason player of the year, who had 47 in a game against Ohio State. But the Jacks at home at Frost Arena, especially are very good in these kind of games against big time opponents. Uh, remember they hung tough with Notre Dame two years ago when Notre Dame came in as the number three team in the country and that ended up as an 11 point game at Frost Arena. So you go from 53 last year when Louisville beat them at Louisville. It's going to be closer than that. We know that. <laughs> How close the Jacks can come in this game is going to be really uh, fun to watch. And South Dakota State 
coming off a not so great performance last night against Northern Iowa. They've got two practices basically to get ready for Louisville. Aaron Johnston said we're not going to change much. We can't change who we are. We just got to do the things we do well and we'll see what the Jacks can do on Sunday against Louisville. They always seem to step it up when it comes to those big teams. I mean, no stranger to them, but uh, yeah. they are not the only team in action for South Dakota State this weekend. Of course, the football team yes. taking on Northern Iowa round two of the FCS playoffs. So this Valley matchup in round two, what can we expect from that one? Yeah, this is a great weekend for South Dakota State fans. And as you remember on Hobo Day in Brookings, South Dakota State got walloped by Northern Iowa 38 to 18. And there were all kinds of turnovers early for the Jackrabbits, got down 17 to nothing in that first quarter and that's why people a lot of the national writers in the FCS right now are saying you and I is going to come in here and win again because they did it earlier on in the season but this is going to be a much different game than it was on that Hobo Day game that's the last game the Jackrabbits lost they have uh, run the table since then this guy heard him Marcus Weimiller the running back for Northern Iowa this was the first game he had really played and he rolled up 160 yards, I believe, on, on the Jacks in this game. But it's going to be it's going to be so much different from how this first game went between you and I and uh, South Dakota State. Definitely looking forward to a lot of great sports action this weekend. Thanks. Foot, football Saturday afternoon. Football. We've, we've got the men's game live. <laughs> Saturday night against Missouri State at the mm -hmm. Pentagon. All right, right here on Midco SN. Yes. Lots of fun stuff, so thanks. Thanks, dude. All right, coming up next, the North Dakota volleyball team is going dancing tonight against Minnesota. Alex Heinert previews their matchup with the Gophers, and we'll hear from Matt, Mark Pryor. Excuse me, stay right here.